work together as a team, and I must admit, these, these, this group here that I've worked with now for four months, and some of them are, some of them only three, but some four who have been here for the second rotation or the extension, uh, have done great work for me and for the group and for all of us. So just my additional thanks, and thanks very much. You see, you know, our, our, our land is beautiful land, beautiful sea, beautiful people. We have plenty of things. Like cocoa, we get money. We have gold mine and the other things else in Bougainville. Uh, it's a song called Rosa and the chorus, I'd encourage you to sing along if you're uh, so disposed. The chorus goes like this. The chorus goes like this. <laughs> I have a friend named Rosa. She lives in the Rosa. She spends all the time drinking buzz and light wine. Sometimes forget where clothes are. I started playing guitar when I was about nine. And um, some lessons in classical guitar. I wasn't very good at that, as you can tell. So I took to playing country music and folk music. And um, took to writing songs when I was quite late in life. I took to writing songs when I was about 26. Because if I'd written these songs before then, they would have been crap. I'd hike, I'd bike, stick my finger in a dike. Rissol is what I like. I'd rock and roll, I'd lick my granny's mole for a rissol, etc. You know. But then, um, I suppose my songwriting changed a lot when I got to Bougainville. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to people about their experiences in the crisis. And, uh, and all the stories that came out of that, and I wrote them into songs. Time be bomb in no god bite them no god more Nighty come be hard him rock rock for a man He sin down top top me hold him long ting ting Sin down all he sing sing Time crisis come up all he cry Blues in Bougainville sky Sun go down, no day been is got belly see inside village, no got war, and no got bite and picking in, you no got bright to me. Go back long as place, a plenty of mama's place, na harim, or guitar he cry. Blues and bogan will sky. Save your blood. Your name, your 
Fis emno strongyet, lo e no da emno strongyet. You save lo ispla, you save true lo ispla. So you must talk him, you must have change him. The people want to know, or people like save, you must have change him now. He got cost and he missed up. Time you go, you must now make this place for you, because I know the fact. Me save. Time you go, peace lo yellow island, lo and all lo here, you been planning, nai no kuru up yet, emi no karim kaga yet. That the landowners wanted the government to uh, to review their policy on mining, to review, you know, what could they do to, you know, to improve. I don't think it ever was in their mind that they wanted to start a war, never. They were, were telling the government and the mine, come on, st st you know, stop working the mine, let us stop for a while and you know, negotiate and talk about what, can, what, what is a better deal that will make the people happy, that will make the government happy, the government in Port Mosby and the government in Bougainville. Instead of approaching it positively and you know, saying to the people, let's talk about this and that, they did the opposite. Torching down the villages, and then they had roadblocks, checkpoints, and then they would harass people, Bougainvilleans, and that. And I just felt like inside me, I was feeling, you know, that that our freedom was stripped from us. So, you know, one can only understand why our young people, our men, started retaliating. Suppose, suppose, good for a sin down one time more people, I think this was sin down by come up good. Me fear him, that's all. No side for some para something, me no fear him good. Me can talk. Okay, that me walk or the talk backside from me, one time more peace committee for me, or chat even walking more container, even or even come up good. That's all side, side for some para, me no fear him good. Me no right why you going to see me. You must stop. Suppose you right go. You put him somewhere around or save you. But he can't be through Bougainville. Me right. Because suppose you go. This person that he know not come up good. Me can talk. Me right. Dine borrow you. Somewhere around borrow you must stand. Because this low island, he walk on a back of a bed. Me can talk. The years between 1990 and 1997, October. In those years, in, in almost every part of Bougainville, women stayed at home and they looked after the family. And they worried about where their medicine would come from, where their clothes would come from. You know, where would they get clothes for their children? Or the basic necessities of like, like laundry soap, you know, just the basic things, you know, uh, or salt in some cases where the army came and raided villages and had massacres or whatever in villages. And who was there that bore the burden, you know, and, and the, the sorrow and that? It was the women. When they came to take me in, 
We were hiding on the hilltops From my village down below Smell of burning, hear the gunshots My house I can rebuild When it's time to start a new life What they did to my wife Cause it seems now to me now That when she cries oceans She finds ways to hide When she bleeds roses She bleeds all inside There are stories of women giving birth in the bush of raising children in the bush on the run from the PNG Defence Forces. There are stories of uh, a woman going into the Arable morgue looking for her brother and finding him there on a table. And one story that particularly affected me was, uh, was an interview with a woman who was in Booker Hospital having operations uh, to repair internal damage done when she was raped by a, a soldier who strapped the handle of a kettle to his penis when he penetrated it. You can't win a war like that in that way. I mean, you can't win it in any meaningful sort of way. And it's a lesson people learned in Vietnam, or didn't learn in Vietnam. It's a lesson that recurs again in Bougainville, and that, that's why that story needs to be told again and again. I mean, in traditional societies, Greek, ancient Greek society, Aboriginal society, wisdom was passed down through stories rather than self-help books. And so stories like this, the story of the Bougainville crisis is important. So we followed that platoon and we waited in the big bush. Later on, one afternoon, we caught the men in ambush. Got that corporal in my sights, put a bullet through his forehead. But even now that He's dead, no such thing as revenge Because when she cries oceans She finds ways to hide When she bleeds roses She bleeds all inside of sight When she cries oceans She finds ways to hide When she bleeds roses She bleeds all inside In 1996, we organized a Women's Peace Forum. And we brought like 700 women together from all over Bougainville so that they could speak one voice and, and put more pressure on the, the responsible authorities. The women's uh, groups are playing their different parts, uh, becoming partners to the peace process. They are uh, coming up with their own organizations like churches, uh, NGOs, and they, uh, they are um, also playing very dynamic role behind the scene. Um, because uh, the ex-combatants are also their sons. So when they come home during the day, then that's when they talk to them in-house. In and also, here is a matrilineal society. Of course it worked. Of course it worked. Because in Bougainville, you see, we, we, we are a matrilineal society. Women have a higher place. Uh, women own the land, and, and, and women can make decisions. And whatever a woman says, I know men will always listen. There's a saying in our culture where we say, we are peace-loving people. And so I said to them, if we are peace-loving people, do we really and truly represent it in our behavior, in our action, in our attitude? And then the men began to speak our language. They said, it's true. And I can still remember Kabi saying, yes, it is true. The women are saying what all of us want. We want the war to stop. Yeah, and then there's the story of the peace process. It's the story of an unarmed group going in and helping out with, helping to harness the, the, the local willpower towards peace. The stories of women's meetings that stood up to uh, 
former combatants and said enough's enough. The stories of people coming back to their village, settling down, starting school for their kids again. These small stories uh, prove that peace is possible. The world's there. Generally, it is. We look in our long flatty chicken in here. Long uh, 1989, one fellow, big fellow, heavy didn't come up long island belong. You fell and bug it up and we'll get us something. Now this fellow heavy going up long, of course up long, 1997. Now long 1997, old man had been seen down na boom, na talk to. Or he been thinking, passing belong fight, him no way long straight, him just fellow been thinking, passing belong, seen down na boom, na talk to, him way belong straight. Now he been working one fellow agreement while he been agree. There's some peace in fight and a rouse in musket. <laughs> We've been working with him and we've been asking me to long come on island, long hard of a new fella, long straight from this fella peace process. I still remember that, that day the, the truce was announced. And then, you know, a few days later, I mean, five days later, the the, the BRA and the, the, the defense force were asked to put down their arms. And the BRA, I, the ones that I knew and who were coming into North Bougainville and to Buka, they started putting their arms away. And we were so relieved because the roadblocks were taken away. Now we've been hard and talk belong Peter. <laughs> now talk belong Maria. <laughs> now only got worry long behind time. Time behind me, Pella Lucy, my island. Now plenty of other fellow man Long Island belong you fella. He got worry long one of something by come up behind me fella Lucy my island. <laughs> now me fella, me no like him and you fella. Behind time belong you fella, I'm not clear. He got plenty hard work, plenty obstacles he stopped long road. And now close too, me fella must Lucy my island belong you fella. Now me sorry. <coughs> because me ham must long sin down a harm story long you fella. The story where man him been buggered up something, buggered up in Pinish and have been strimed, hard long straight him. by the chiefs was taken away from them by the barrel of the gun. Most of us realized that, but there was nothing we could do. Bougainville society is very much about village life. Life is sort of, people live in villages all over the island and each village is its own community with a fairly well organized sort of hierarchy. There'll be some sort of big man there, a chief, and a community of elders, a council of elders there, and they make all the decisions. The problem with uh, a situation where weapons enter, guns enter that community is that, you know, some young bloke down the road in the house can get a gun and suddenly all the power structures are turned on their head because this kid can command some respect and fear. That's why when we started addressing the issue of weapons disposal, we saw it as the opportunity to give back that authority to the chiefs. And now that we have almost completed all the state's tools on weapons disposal, the chiefs are now able to regain their powers. They're going to be announcing the completion of stage two of the weapons disposal process, which is going to uh, allow the uh, process of the elections towards the new autonomous government to take place. So it's a really crucial moment in the history of the peace process. Well, Fred's role here as liaison officer Booker um, his primary focus is working with the various key players here in the local community. By key players we mean, if you like, the, the local leadership. The various factional leaders, uh, the government leaders, the provincial administrators and so on. His presence brings confidence to people like me. 
because I can talk openly to him. He makes himself available to me. And whenever I need advice or assistance, he's always there. This road's uh, pretty good along here for about 500 metres and it all turns to custom. Phenomenon House is um, 17147, so it's taken us about 1 hour 20 minutes to do 27 kilometres. Just belong peace. This is the publication we put out to um, in a sense fill the information vacuum that exists in this place about what's going on. Just talks about peace process issues, and uh, whenever we uh, stop at a village, we give them out. Chief Herman, he's up. Hop means up over there. Long hop, go long hop, go over there. You know, we needed to have a peacekeeping post to facilitate the process. We said we would like maybe have the regional peacekeeping post, which was from the Pacific Islands, including Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, whatever, and that we w wanted unarmed. This one is uh, the uh, Queen's Honour, is uh, MBE. Oh, okay. Yeah, you go up to a village and a lot of things that obviously happen in that village and you'd be standing around you know, trying to get to know people and there'd be a lot of tension in the air, a couple of different factions there. <laughs> And there were a lot of people who were still suspicious of the peace process and, and of Australian peace monitors. In the beginning, I, I used to have, like, in, my, in the back of my mind, should I really trust them? One, Australia was always connected with the mine, Bowen Bill Copper Mine, Rio Tinto, the company who owned the copper mine. Also, we connected Australia with the fact that Australia was supplying aid, military aid to Papua New Guinea. The Australians uh, were perceived as providing helicopters, Uruguay helicopters, assisting the Defence Force of Papua New Guinea, training the uh, Defence Force, providing the funds you know, to wage war on Bougainville, you know, military hardware, so and so forth. These things were, were, were things that really were deep down in the, um, the hearts of people of Bougainville, but it was on, 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 on the rebel side. I suppose you folks will have inferred from the size of my biceps that, that, I, that I'm not, that I'm a thinking man. <laughs> no, I've been living with the military for six months and I've, I've done a bit of thinking about you folks. <laughs> you people, an organisation of professional ass kickers, are here to persuade former and wannabe ass kickers that ass kicking is just not on. <laughs> Well, I suppose they were friendly. I mean, they were not alone. They were Australians, New Zealanders, uh, and uh, Fijians, and from Vanuatu they came. But the positive thing about this peacekeeping post was that they had civilian peacekeepers, and that made a difference. And they had women. I'd like to start by saying thank you very much for inviting me to come and talk to you today. This is the first women's meeting that I've been um, invited to attend. And it's great to see that there's so many people who've come along to hear about um, what AusAid's doing and also to hear from you, which is what I'm most interested in about... People what uh, who had negative attitude toward Australians began to open their eyes, began to open their minds and ah, these people are good people. 
re real rebuilding of Bougainville will come from the women. It won't come from the men. The women are the foundation of Bougainvillean society. They're the ones that are in the main When Kusi and you were leaving for Bug Mill, part of the second battalion from life, I felt so proud. My husband, the soldier, working for peace in a land far away. I think the first time I became aware of Bougainville and what was going on there, or that anything was going on there, was when I was riding my bike through a storm water drain in my mid-twenties. I saw a large piece of graffiti that said, Bougainville, Australia's hidden war. About a couple of years later, I started working for the Foreign Affairs Department. They were sending people over to Bougainville to work with this peace monitoring group. And a few of my mates had gone and they said, you didn't have to do any desk work. So I said, right, I'll give that a go. Um, Hillary's gone up to back to Gagan to sort out some stash back in the village. I'm going to try and get up tomorrow and sort it all out. And uh, next thing I know is landing in Europa Airport. You get off the Hercules and you see this, what used to be an airport, and it's just decimated, just destroyed, flat, burnt out. Then you get in a truck on the way to Arawa, and you see these lean, very muscly looking, very black people walking around with 20 inch long grass knives and you think, this is a hectic place. We were staying at an outpost called Sirica Tower. The security guards were uh, a couple of ex-BRA blokes, one of them called Big Joe and one of them called Dominic. And these blokes were bloody hilarious. You know, Big Joe was this huge bodybuilder guy. Good. 10 points. So these men who were, you know, killers during the crisis and, you, and you, that's all you, that's the first thing you knew about them because it was a story and uh, yet they were so gentle to be around and uh, we used to stay up at night singing songs that's how I learned Pigeon talking to those guys playing songs writing songs and they taught me you know as you got to know them they taught me local folk songs and talk place dialects and they just so, gave me another into the place Called Narayan Arts, and it's in the Nagavis language of the Bana district. It's just a love song about a girl called Narayan. Narayan, why do you make those shy signs at me? Why do you smile in that funny way at me? I think you like me. I think that's when I realised that uh, music was an important thing here, that it could be, it could be very useful in, in the job I was doing. I didn't understand about the penguin thing Who's Francis owner or what's B.R.A. But I understood that you were a soldier as you marched like a soldier from the barracks that day. I said, I love you now. A big pal band, but on Australia, by come, we we'll play him along one pillar ceremony along Ottawa. Only well, must play him along one pillar ceremony. We don't talk goodbye, long PMG. So all you've been asking me, long writing, or sing sing, na or whoop passing, belong Bougainville anthem, or sim all you nap kiss him, na school him all yet, long play him all anthem. And why belong writing or not, sir? Where man in up, not a man in up, read him, na play him. What music means to me is that, you know, like, I suppose it's, it's a form of art of expressing what you feel. For example, if you went to a Catholic church on a Sunday or a United Church, the way they sing those, you know, scripture songs, 
course. You know, it just lifts your spirit up. Maybe when the, the crisis first started, um, the defense force, the, the, all the services was withdrawn from the, the, the province. People had nowhere to turn to. And then from my experience, I know that all, not just the believers, but people who did not know the Lord in their, in their life, they all, uh, at this time, they all tend to God. Music is a, a sense of maybe bringing a sense of humor to everybody, um, and that it enlightens the heart of the people. It is a form of, uh, of bringing down uh, God's anointing into the people who are, who are in, the, in the service at that time. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I have the spirit of the church. We pray that Brother Albert, Lord, the Lord, Lord, must be. Take care of our lives, Lord, Father God. Religion and music and spirituality tend to integrate more into daily life. Um, and uh, you feel it when you get there, it rubs off and you get caught up. And everyone sings there, you know, Hillary. Resistance Kamani sings, Joe Kabui likes to have a sing along at night. Yeah, Australian music is something people do in the corner of their life. Bogomort's right in the middle there. into a frenzy of this circle kind of dance where they go around in circles blowing into pipes, bang drums and you can tell how it really pulls the community together like they just literally go in a circle so there's a real centrifugal force to it. That's what music is in Bogan, it's a kind of centrifugal force it brings people together. harmonica is no good because it got two holes you see two holes but the the one fret got it's very nice you can hear the good sound i had this weekly radio program on radio bougainville called uh, saturday night party bulmakau time bulmakau time close up long peace now uh, and we like take talk long you take it through long haram uh, or mouse water belong me, no sing sing belong me. Mr. Green introduced himself to me as um, out on the step of Radio Bogueville as, um, as Bogueville's leading horticulturalist. Yeah, I'm nice long show belong you, I like your show a lot. And he, he just got talking and he had this wonderful deep voice. They call it Heliconia. And in our top place in uh, Buka, they call it uh, Banna. I thought, well, I'll get this guy in to do a weekly segment on horticulture in Bogan. And so I got him in and he'd, you know, he'd talk every week about planting vanilla, or he'd talk about, um, you know, how to deal with, um, how to dispose of garden waste. They call it Traveler's Farm. You must plant it south, north. And then he'd pick a song, and his favorite records were Slim Dusty, Credence, Clearwater Revival, and he liked a bit of the kinks too. But 
Yeah, I thought, yeah, Mr. Green, you're radio, mate. Uh, he's my brother. Not a friend, but a brother. system in the Melanesian society and when Fred comes up with uh, with his musical instrument with his ability to sing uh, the people loved him instantly they want to uh, um, cooperate with him they want to befriend him they want to live with him and they accept him readily as well into their own family their own community and the, the society as a whole we couldn't coerce anyone to do anything. We had to work with the people and their great will for peace. And Ultimately it was a psychological process. How do you persuade a guy in a village that he doesn't need his weapon anymore when he knows the guy in the next village has got one? It's a confidence thing. He has to believe in the peace process. And there was a sense in which just our presence there just the fact that we were being there made a difference to that. So it became very much a matter of learning how to be there in a way that was meaningful and that made an impact. <laughs> and I just started taking my guitar out and writing songs and singing songs and it all sort of evolved into a formal patrol called the Bulmakal Patrol, where we'd all spill into four-wheel drive and head out to a village. People uh, just call him Bulmaka. When they saw him, when they see him everywhere, they call him Bulmaka. There goes Bulmaka, there goes Bulmaka. Hello, Mr. Bulmaka. <laughs> right now, it's, it seems to be becoming a common phrase. Hello, Bulmaka. <laughs> it's a animal, it's a cacao. You, know. you call it Bulmaka. I said, why do you want to call yourself a cow, right? Right up to this day, none of the little kids have seen the bull macaw or the kettle or the cows. And that's something that makes it real fun, yeah. PMT Cyril Bonita, Mr. Fred Smith, and another plan named Blowell. Suppose you had him all time long, Radio Bougainville. Let me say I talk, Mr. Bulmakao. <laughs> no, maybe go back long place, Blong me. Because me not been enough long finding Bulmakao along Bougainville. <laughs> no time me stop back long place, Blong me. Or get the night, me know an up long sleep, me cry long bed belong me, because me know an up long pine in Bulmacow. <laughs> so me been come back long pine in Bulmacow. And my buy me look, long all get a hop, buy me look on top long mountain, buy me look on top long DY. Long pine in Bulmacow. Buy me look long salt water. Let me know an up long pine him. No got, me gear menu. Me been come back long Bougainville. Not because me like pine in Bulmacao. We may come back because we like him too much, you fella, old people belong Bougainville. Because long ting ting belong me, you fella, and one fella people, 
who said he'd been losing or get something. Long time, long crisis. Trust all. You fellas still in up long, Dennis. You still in up long, Sing Sing. I still love, love, laugh, laugh. The time you laugh, time you sing, time you dance, you stop free. Now you got courage. It was all a way of engaging, of being there and creating confidence. To me, at least, it, I suppose it, it, it made me have, have respect for Fred in a sense that here was this young man coming out to be skip and, and looking at peace in a different way and looking at his role in a different way. I first met Fred in 1998. It was also Fred's first time to come to Bougainville. And after Fred found out that I was also a musician, he came and asked me if we can put a tape together. A tape that can be distributed all over Bougainville so that people could listen to peace songs. So we worked intensively for two weeks. In, the stu in, in that library up there. People coming in and out, kids from the school just going, what the hell's going on? Bands coming in, choir coming in, all sorts of people came in and sang songs of peace because so many Bogan villains had turned their experiences into songs. The songs were, were very much chosen especially to really drive the peace process into, into another stage of uh, reconciliation within the province itself. We duplicated copies, same uh, uh, mass production, and uh, that's around about probably 20,000 copies, I don't know. They came to, off, to the, our office and gave us a whole carton of it, and I was responsible, I got the women to distribute and give some to the young people and all that, and they all liked it. Everywhere you went on Bougainville at that time, these peace tapes were played here and there. It also contributed in a very big way in convincing people of Bougainville to be once again united, to be able to know through those songs what, what peace was all about. Then the first thing I heard about it after that was uh, I was in Port Moresby working with the High Commission there reading the papers as you do and uh, there it was, it was International Peace Day around the world and the PMG had celebrated this by releasing 20,000 copies of the Songs of Peace Day. Oh, there you go. From little things, big things come. Uh, I, I thought, I think, if they did bring the guns, we we didn't have any peace. But they came with uh, their mouth and their hands and come and talk to people and uh, guitar and their guitar like a Fred do. And I think that's why we got peace in Bougainville. Last time you had him by reading for you me to tell him that you may got a uh, friend for you me here on PMG Fred Smith. Fred, uh, I think you can go ahead one time to say hello, Fred. Oh, thank you, through Aloysius. Uh, online PMG, like welcome one pella cessation ceremony, you only call him ceremony where we pella pe by Mark him or Pinis, belong work, belong PMG. Uh, we pella like all in one try pella concert long uh, Independence Park. Long Arawa, long 30 June. Now, band belong me by play, we'll see in Bulmakao band. So please, keep him long, ting ting belong you, 30 June, cessation ceremony, Arawa Park, featuring Bulmakao. Uh, thank you to Fred. I know that I'm going to be on the 30th of June. So I'm going to be on the 30th of June. Okay. Alright, let me come up now long Bible readings for you to tell tonight. Let me 10 minutes to uh, nine o'clock.
he won't be able okay. to attend. It's also a case of being able to get these invitations to the people okay. in Good. time for them to yeah. get to them. All right. That's why sort of yeah. time is becoming critical. Very critical. Um, time is against us. Yes. So I picked my blue guitar and I started playing slow. Had another heavy night again last night, you know. I was up till 7.30 at the Tropicana bar Playing Baby I Go to Rio on my lucky blue guitar Says dear Judith, in appreciation of your support for the peace process over the five past five years, I would like to invite you to attend the ceremony. Yours sincerely, Ian Lily, Brigadier Commander. Well, I feel uh, very happy. <laughs> Rob Ducky, you are the one. You make past time so much fun. Dan Lifelo, get out of bed. That's what I did every day. Where do you stop, man? You know what I mean? And then I'd have a whole list of things I wanted to get done, people I wanted to talk to mainly. That was my job, to talk to people. It's just that I've got something I want to achieve on the way to Malzing, which is just a quick conversation with the bishop, which is necessary for the cessation ceremony, which is, you know, the number one. Is this the Catholic bishop that's yeah. not going anymore? But nothing really works the way it should work. The phones don't work. The power works some of the time. You can't really make appointments there. People have watches, but it's more really a status symbol than a means of getting to the right place at the right time. And people aren't in their offices when you think they're going to be in their office. So you've got to make yourself open to happy accidents. And the way to do that was to just put your boots on and walk out the door. Hope that uh, the gods are smiling on you, you know, just to get things done, to talk to people. And that was my job, to talk to people. And if, and if you see Hillary, yeah. can you tell him I need to talk to him? Okay. These small Pacific towns start to look the same. Missionaries, mercenaries play their little games. Better bash them with the Bible than the butt of an SLR. So they say, but either way, I'd rather play my blue guitar. Bishop. Yeah. Fred. Yeah, I can't make it. Sorry. No. I have I have here so many invitations for the next two weeks. <laughs> popular man. Well, I stole the TNT out of the Goldridge magazine. Blew the Kakambono bridge out to the edge of smithereens. Packed each truck with 50 kilos, set the dead off from afar. Snapped it like a string from my lucky blue guitar. Good talk. Yeah. I don't want to talk. You got plenty of respect. What, what do I have to talk about? Closing prayer, that's all. Now suppose Emily no not come. Yeah, then I will do it. Then you... <laughs> I think for, for the, you know, the developed world, time is measured in terms of money. In our culture, in Melanesian culture, it's about people. Time is about people. It's about how you care for your people. And what's made this peace process is about taking so much time for talking and discussing. But you see, the fact that he comes to me and he asks me to go and say the prayer. You know, I need to consult my chief first. Have you seen Hillary today? No, he didn't come today. You see him around the streets? No. I just had this intuition that the administrator might know, the deputy administrator, Aaron Rigamu, who's going to be the MC. I had to go and talk to him anyway, so I went to Rigamu's office and there he was. He's trying to arrange for my band to go to Arwa because he loves my band. To cook and, bamboo band. And the Mokuk members, especially the girls, admire him. They think that he's the, he's the best musician around on Bougainville. The second best, too. The second best. Yeah, it's a song Hillary taught me. It means, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? You suck on the firm breast and the milk will come out. It's a dirty bugger, that Hillary. It means, uh, what, what did I tell you? My boots are made of leather and I cannot play the part. My boots are made of leather and I got this blue guitar.
Boca town in the north of Bougainville is really the business centre and during the conflict it was held by the PNG Defence Forces who were collaborating with the resistance forces led by Hillary. Arawa town down in the south is the capital of Bougainville. During the conflict it was held mainly by the Bougainville Revolutionary Army but before the conflict it was a boom town it's where all the mine workers and the expats lived. I oh, was well, surprising really, you know, the band late. Seven o'clock in the morning, not here. That's unusual for musicians. Yeah, I don't mind, I can wait. Those three options for the band are firstly to come down with Chris Koro Koro of the UNDP who will be driving to Arawa today. The first option is to go with him. Second option is to go with Hillary. Third option, which you might not want to tell them about, is choppers tomorrow afternoon. Over. Uh, Roger, we'll go for one or two because um, if uh, the third option is fully utilised by all the people that turn up, there won't be enough choppers anyway. Over. Roger that. Over. Thank you. Out. Philip, what happened to the band? No, I don't know what's wrong with the guys. Only well, stop sleep, you think? Uh, they, they, they could be still sleeping up. Now, if you come down to the river, you don't have to worry. Down you got no money. Boys in the Bulmakau band cut their teeth playing in the bars around Arawa and they were famous down there until the conflict broke out and they had to make their way back to their villages in the north. So in a way it's important to bring Hillary's band and the Bulmakau band down to Arawa for this ceremony. It's just a small way of bringing Bougainville back together. And it should be a good gig. While you're driving in your car, don't look for love Let it find you where you are, cross the road While you're driving in your car, don't look for love Let it find you where you are, and watch the road While you're driving in your car, don't look for love Let it find you where you are, watch the road While you're driving in your car, don't look for love Bob. Are you all banging to turn up on the day, do you think, or not now? Are they not we'll start? Tomorrow. They will. Okay, that's all I really need to know. Yeah. All right. See you, mate. First time I came here, it was pretty emotional, you know? Especially the place was dead, now it's dead, and... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's total difference. Yeah? I can remember standing here and you know, uh, cast uh, sopas, you know, trucks, cars running around here. And uh, it was once a very lab, lively place, you know. That's the supermarket here, just over the other side here. And just beside us here is the uh, warehouse building. It, once, uh, yeah, it was uh, once used by the Arawa Town Authority. Bougainville uh, Revol Revolutionary Army, and especially the land owners that uh, own this place, they uh, burn down these buildings. Long year, Antarctica. This is a ceremony. Um, you better like us to you pull a long seam. Long seam is called a Bougainville Provincial Anthem. Sing it through, long rehearse one time, Mipala. Now practice one time, Mipala. Hum, <laughs> 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 
Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm a boss. Hello. You made it. That's our life, isn't it? Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Water. Water from the Bulmaka. Water from the Bulmaka. That's cool, we've got the, the, the Bulma car band and the cultural group. Has anyone seen Hillary's symphony orchestra in the room? No, no, no. Hillary said he would, they were not coming. They were? They were, we they were coming. coming. Not coming? They're not coming. Oh, it's our security. <laughs> it's our own security. <laughs> We've not been able to find him. Last I heard of him, what's his name, um, Ross Vavio, um, saw, thought he saw the back of Hillary's head heading past Belisi House, so he took off after him. We can assume they're not going to make it then. I've organised... Uh, Women's group to prepare a whole dinner for us, click beast. So uh, we can send down Kai Kai sleep. Guys are great. I couldn't believe it. I thought you wouldn't make it. <laughs> no, it's, you know, we had a room. The come in also with the come in many. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Great. Fred asked me to cut down on the numbers. I said, look, no, I, I can't cut down the numbers. I have to bring the whole group because this is not all about saying farewell to the PMC only, but it's all about uh, giving confidence to my people, being able to bring this group who have never been to Arwa for the last 15 years. Coming to Arwa is, is, is a big thing to them and it is very important to them because they are now able to see what the people of Arwa are doing, what they are thinking, and to be able to know that, you know, they have brothers and sisters in Arwa and Keta District Court of Metal. Koropera, as in propera. Yeah, that's not proper. That's a really interesting song because that's, that's, that's an example of a Bougainvillian song that was, somehow came out of Kieta High School around 1962. Um, and it was just an experience of the first time you know those kids had seen a helicopter and they saw a helicopter coming in and bring the surveyors into the mine. It was just a song that kids sang and the words go, there's a big plane in the sky, it's a weird kind of plane. It's got a wing that spins around in the middle and it's called a helicopter. That's all there is to it. Barusini namori Bacana coropera meroki. It was a very simple song, innocent song at the time, but it forebodes what actually happened when the choppers came in and the surveyors came in and the mine started up. Forty years later there was a civil war.
my back, pulled on my boots and my socks. There in the transit tent, down on the Lollaho docks, two tours. Six months. Now I believe it is time. The infinite ocean is calling me on down the line. Now welcome long TMG cessation ceremony. You're long out of a long 30 June, huh? Thank you long come. Today, long start in this palace ceremony, got one palace special band, only call him Mokok Bamboo Band. Only come long one pillar village, only call him Gagan. Now I think long this pillar 65, 40 tasso, only no been come long out of before. Because you serve a good, long time belong crisis, sir. Uh, many know enough Lucy in Bokal and come long Arawa because I'm savvy for it. Now you enough come. So in first time belong plenty of people long come long Arawa. So in one pala special occasion. So please, enough you please make him welcome Mokuk Bamboo Band. sort of opened a new chapter for us, the Bougainvilleans. And uh, at the same time, too, it also raised some questions, maybe to us all, about the, the law and order situation here in, in Bougainville. Because right now, there is no law and order um, in place in, in the province. But at the same time, too, um, it is a challenge to all of us here on the province for us to to be able to maybe to respect each other and especially for the younger the ex combatant especially for them to to maybe to to really come back come come home and settle down and then have respect for for us all within the community it is all up to us now Bogan billions being able to do it ourselves. I just hope that peace will be on. Strangers have always come out of the endless. 
The bad news is the band is still in bed. Fair enough, it's only two in the afternoon. The good news is I think I've found a pig. has been uh, expecting us all along, the Bull Macau band. We're really glad to see the crowd here today. It's not a problem. So we'll take you through a long Cameron secession ceremony. Like play one more sing sing on people. Are. very moving that 
time we did the album, and it was it was it was like it was something special that I had in my life. Doing something for Bougainville, which I have never experienced with anyone like Fred. sense that that I was coming from a better culture to impose a peace process on them which they weren't capable of themselves you, you really have to go in ready to learn something new every day and um, just being open to people and open to their humor and open to their stories and their music and their customs and and, and that makes for a wonderful exchange miss the place Bougainville I miss Bougainville he No one get that. No one get the pigs. No one get the doggy stuff. Them just so. Thank you. Pop up along them, been walk long all mine now. Mine them, my penis all say monkey must find them. Another fella walk, another fella out they go home. With this uh, song of peace from the Bulma Cow Band, I think it's it's. Really played a very very important role, and I know a lot of kids and a lot of people in Bougainville will miss Fred, Fred Smith, the Bull Macau. We hope to see him back someday. It's really a comfort and a, a wonderful feeling that you know after. Um, all these years, um, all the, the bad images, the bad perceptions, it is now something of the past now. Old get a white man in no save long answer. Old get a red skin in no save long answer. Oh, rest a monkey, you yet look him long, road belong you. We had a meeting last night and they expressed what, how they felt when they were in power. It was a, a changing experience for them. It is something that uh, they will not forget. It is something that they will now go out to other people on Buka Island and tell them, look, there is nothing to fear now. Real peace is here. Let's stop fearing one another on Buka Fred promised me to give me a present when he goes. He told me that I got, uh, he got one present for me. I don't know what present. Might be the harmonica or I don't know. Well, oh, Rasta Monkey, M-R-I-T-C-E-C Close to Rasta Monkey, by your pine and belly, see Oh, Rasta Monkey, by your pine and long road to go I'm, I'm not crying. <laughs> Are you laughing? I am laughing. See, Monkey, you know, can worry You've got plenty time now, you know, need hurry Close to Rasta Monkey, by your so and me road to go home Right, 
bottle. Okay. You got well, one for something long you? Well, you move all some more gold, sir. Go along here. Got one for a special present long you. Oh, man. Eh, <laughs> now, <laughs> Bulu Macau. No, You got one whole tassel. You got two whole. She spoke of a mine on a far away island Island of people black as the night All they like loose in Papua New Guinea So we sent soldiers over to fight Like my husband against the black islanders No savvy why no got good reason why husband and I Now the graders and dozers Rust in the Bougainville sun <laughs> 